everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing with you a very special topic to anyone who clicked on this video because if you did, it means that you love Frenchies. It really seems that Frenchie owners, we just have a special bond with one another. We love this breed so much. I think that there's a lot of things that new Frenchie owners might have no clue about taking care of a Frenchie because they are special. They are not your typical dog and they have some issues and, and some quirks that I think, well, that I think is really important for you to know before you get a Frenchie to make sure that this is 100% the right breed for you. I first got introduced to the wonderful world of Frenchies through working at a doggy daycare and there were several little funny Frenchies running around and the funniest part about it was that all of the other workers, all the other co-workers of mine, really didn't like the Frenchies. They thought they were the most annoying out of all of the animals there. And I was like, I think they're the best ones out of all the animals here. I started to realize with that, that it was kind of a love or hate relationship with Frenchies. Clark is right at my feet playing with one of the cats, which is a really good thing because he's actually sick at the moment. I'll tell you about that in this. But let's just get Clarky to say hello. Oh, it's a good boy. Oh, you got your little snots in my nose. Are you good? Are you okay? Hey, hello. Your cat here is on you. Poopoo small. Are you okay? Oh. I love you, honey bun. Oh, he's chewing my clothes. That's okay. He deserves to right now. He's sick. Oh, he's a good boy. Will you please look at the camera? Would you look at the camera? Are you? important to touch on is the fact that he's sick right now. We've had Clark for two years. He's gotten sick three times. We've had to take him to the vet and get treated three times. Hey! <laughs> this is just a madhouse. Okay, I'm gonna take off my glasses. And I should say, actually, he's been sick multiple times, but I had the treatment at home to keep giving him. Purebreds already are more susceptible to having immune issues because of the breeding. As an example of what's gone on with Clark, right now he's had what the vet is calling gastroenteritis. She's still running some tests to find out if there's something else going on, um, but she's given us some medicine to help calm his stomach. He's been really unwell recently. His mood is improving, but he's still not doing really great. Let's just say when he's going outside, he's having some issues and it's just been really sad because he's laying around, he's not himself. He's really, really mopey and it makes me so sad. I hope he gets better soon. I'm just looking at him because he's having some food over there, which is a good thing because the first day he wasn't eating. When we first got him, we did have to go through a deworming process, but that's really natural with any dog that you get. You need to go through that process when you first get a dog, but he did have worms when we got him. So he did get pretty sick from that. And luckily we were able to treat it and <laughs> just reliving the terrifying worms. It was really scary. <laughs> He's also extremely prone to getting ear infections and he has had many of them. I have developed a routine, an ear cleaning routine with him that really does help prevent him from getting the ear infection. You kind of have to keep an eye on a Frenchie's ears every week and make sure there's nothing going on in there. Do a gentle cleaning of their ears pretty frequently to make sure that it doesn't build up at all because they will get an ear infection like that. It's crazy. I would say every two weeks he needs his ears cleaned. Ever since then, he hasn't had the ear issue. So I would say as a precaution, just do that with your Frenchie if you get one. Also, I wanna say about his health. I have another dog, as you've seen on many of my videos, I'm sure. Her name is Lana. She is a bull mastiff mixed with a boxer and I've had zero 
problems with Lana's health. And we've had Lana for five years, four years, but she's five years old. I haven't had to take the Lana, take the Lana. I haven't had to take the Lana to the vet at all. Knock on wood, touch wood, oh my gosh, please let her be healthy. I haven't had any issues and I think it really is a testament to how mixed breeds tend to be healthier than pure breeds. Nina's like, when is it gonna be a video about cats? <laughs> Stop. As I'm sure you can figure out, if you do have to take a dog to the vet this many times in a year, you may need to have a little dog fund for their emergencies and things like that. It's not something that you want to be sprung on you. You definitely want to have money set aside just in case anything happens. I mean, we should all have an emergency fund anyway, but you should probably plan a little dog emergency fund too if you have a Frenchie, to be honest. Something to know about their personality is that, well, first of all, they're hilarious. They make the funniest noises and <laughs> they're so like roly poly, just these funny little potatoes and they sit like little people. They're just like the goofiest dog I've ever been around and he cracks me up all day and it's a beautiful positive thing for me. I have learned from other people that they find the snorting annoying because it doesn't stop. I mean, you don't hear him snorting right now, but generally if he's moving around, you hear him snorting or breathing heavily through his little pushy nose, you know? The main point is that you should be aware that your dog is gonna snore they're going to snort all the time and if you find those things irritating it might not be the dog for you because it really is not something that will ever change <laughs> they're gonna be snorting they're gonna be snoring all the time and they're gonna be passing little Frenchy gas they're really known for that too <laughs> Nose care. <laughs> Nose care is something that I didn't know was a thing I would need to know. <laughs> Lana over here has a perfect wet healthy nose and Clark is prone to getting a really chapped dry nose. It came to the point where he started to get these little cracks in his nose and I had no experience with this from other dogs that I've had in the past because they all had long snouts. They didn't have this issue. I realized he can't lick his nose his tongue doesn't go up there. It just seems that with their structure, they can't really lick their nose. At least I haven't ever seen him do it. So I figure maybe that has something to do with the dryness. They are gonna have some respiratory differences with their nose being so smushed into their face. But what I discovered is that you can give a dog coconut oil on their nose once a day for about a week and it will heal the cracked nose. And actually you'll get little bits of dark nose pieces on your hand when you do that. It's very strange. I looked it up, apparently it's okay and normal, but you don't want their nose to get there in the first place. You want to preemptively rub some coconut oil on their nose. Now that his nose is all perfect and healed, a couple times a week I rub some coconut oil in his nose and I give him a little bit on his lips so he can just taste the coconut oil. <laughs> it's so funny. I, I was actually cooking with it yesterday. He came running in the kitchen like, it's time for my nose. <laughs> like, it's not for you. Another thing about Frenchie grooming is that they have these little folds in their snout. When their eyes get teary, it happens to get wet in there. And if you don't keep it clean, so like using a washcloth, a warm washcloth, and kind of wiping in the cracks, they can develop kind of a stink in their creases and also, it can get a little bit like raw because it's it's not getting dry. I, a couple times a day, will come up to him with some toilet paper. I wipe his eyes because they have these buggy, <laughs> bulging eyes and they happen to get goop in them that they can't really clean out themselves. If you just wipe across with toilet paper, it pulls those right out of their eyes very gently. And then I just do a clean up in Side of his creases, make sure it's dry. An interesting thing about buying harnesses for Frenchies is that it can be hard to find just in regular stores. There are Frenchie stores online. There's one called Frenchie Bulldog, and that's where I've gotten Clark's harnesses and they fit perfectly. They slip over their head and wrap around their body in just the right way that he's completely secure. His little Superman harness came from PetSmart and he can get out of that and he 
has a couple times. It's not like a, he's really trying to go anywhere. He just happens to slip out of it. <laughs> and so it's not very safe and secure. I would definitely recommend shopping from a store that has items that are specifically for Frenchies builds. I wouldn't recommend using a collar. Given their shape, I think it would be extremely easy for them to slip out. And because they're so snorty and they're already kind of like breathing in a strained way, you don't want to be guiding them with a collar and a leash. The harness works so much better. It clips on their back and they're not that strong. They don't really pull the leash very much. So I would definitely go the way of the Frenchie specific harness. Another gross tip about <laughs> Frenchies is that they don't squat right when they go to the bathroom. And unfortunately because of that, they do tend to get their business on their butt from time to time. And unfortunately, it's up to you to clean it. I find that Clark will kind of squat for a moment and then stop and then just get it on himself. And I'm just like, <laughs> can you not? Yeah, unfortunately it's a dirty job, but you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I think that out of all of this, the most important thing to know about Frenchies is that they get overheated really easily. They play in spurts and then they need to take a break, need to take a nap. They're such great little snuggly butts. <laughs> they really need to take it easy. They can overexert themselves. I mean, it's not to say they can't play. They can play really hard and he can play really hard with the big dogs and keep up and keep them on their toes big time. But when he's done, he doesn't always know he's done. So you kind of have to keep an eye on it. And when his breathing starts getting a little too hard, you need to slow him down, get him to relax and calm down. And they're really easy to get to calm down. All I have to do is just hold him and he just starts to go to sleep. <laughs> he's so easy. <laughs> when I take Clark for a walk, I take him around the block. As a puppy, he couldn't make it around the block. He couldn't go the whole way. He could go about half before he would just lay down. He'd be panting like crazy. And I realized he really can't push himself very much. I would have to pick him up and carry him home. But he would develop a stubbornness where when he wanted to get picked up, he was not gonna move. He was gonna just plop on the sidewalk and lay there until I carried his butt home. I'd say Frenchies are really good for lazy people because <laughs> they wanna play, but they only want play for a little and then they want to take a nap and they want to do that several times throughout the day but it's a little spurts of energy instead of like a hardcore run but as he started to get older he was able to make it around the whole block you have to think for you you're taking these huge strides and you're perfectly fine going around this block but they're using their little tiny feet and running 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 trying to keep up with your big legs and they're taking so many more steps for that stride than you are so for them they really need to like keep it at a minimum. I had planned to take him with me to Algonquin Park and I had planned to carry him. I, I, I was gonna do like kind of like a baby strap and you'll actually see a lot of Frenchies being carried around by their owners in like these little baby like dog carriers that are strapped to them and the Frenchies just chilling in there just sitting like they want to be carried. They're lazy. <laughs> they want to walk and have fun for part of the time but when they're done they are done. The thing is is when other dogs are playing with them that's the time when you have to step in and slow them down because they aren't necessarily gonna know that it's best for them and when they're not feeling well if they get inspired to play by other dogs you also have to kind of take that control to let them know that it's time to relax and get them to lay down and chill out for a bit <laughs> my final tip of what new Frenchie owners should know is that you are not gonna be able to go anywhere without getting stopped and people wanting to see your Frenchie <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's pretty cute. Like people really, really love them. There are some people in my building who are obsessed with Clark. They love Clark. They, they see him, they come and they don't say hi to me. They're just like, hi Clark. <laughs> they really love, love, love him. So just be prepared to get a little bit social with your neighbors. <laughs> if you haven't already. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I really hope that you found this information helpful. If you are interested in a part two or you wanna know more about Frenchies, I will do my best to come up with that for you. Just leave your questions and comments below. Please do give me a like because it really helps out my channel. And if you love seeing my Frenchie Clark and my 
big dog Lana and my crazy cats. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram at Niwa Leaf, just as you see it here on my YouTube channel. I post a ton of pictures of Clark because he is just a little rock star and people really like to see him. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching everyone and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.